Hey everyone, and welcome to The Huddle. This is uh, an event that we get together with people every few weeks to talk about them. We talk about Walmart Associates and, and how all this comes together. And today I'm really, really fortunate to have Rachel Brand, who has is, is, uh, been with the company now about, about two years, Rachel, since 2018, if I remember right. And uh, you, um, l- we'll talk about your background and, and some of the things you've done, but uh, let's start with where you grew up and, and your, your Midwest roots and, and how all this has come together for you and your career the last few years. Yeah, yeah. So I grew up in, I was born in Michigan, actually, but grew up in Pella, Iowa, which is a town of, I don't know, nine, maybe 10,000 now people I, that way, or, you know, nor- north, north of here, but very <laughs> similar to LA, like when you drive through the countryside you know, very uh, similar feeling, although flatter than the Ozarks. But yeah, small town upbringing. So it feels kind of like Bentonville probably used to be, but Bentonville, the whole metro area feels a lot bigger now. But yeah, happy to be back in the Midwest after a, I don't know, 25 year sojourn in the Northeast. Yeah, a little tour to the uh, to the Northeast. So you're you're an attorney. You went uh, from growing up in this um, farm town, which which really strikes a chord with me. My my grandparents ran a farm. My grandmother worked in town a little, but my mom grew up on a farm. So I, I, I grew up very similar and had a little John around the world as well. The other way, you went north and I went to, uh, to Asia and, and some other places. But um, what, what led you from the, the farm and your upbringing deciding you wanted to be an attorney? It's a big, big leap and pretty different. So when did you know that's what you wanted to do? That's a good question. So I was a political science major in college, and I'm really interested in government and the, the sort of functioning of government public policy issues. And I think I went to law school because that tends to be a thing that people do when you graduate from college with a poli sci major and you don't know what else you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, it, was a, it was a great way for me to actually get into government later. I didn't go straight into government. I, I was at a couple of law firms and did some other things, but was in and out of the federal government in D.C. for about 20 years. And so that, that law school training uh, was really helpful in that way. So the big question I have is, is why Walmart? So you, you had a successful career as, as an attorney. You worked in government and had some amazing jobs there. And, and I remember meeting you in, in the process when you were thinking about us. So I, I felt like my role was just to, to try to help explain who we are and, and who we aren't. But you, you made the leap. It's been... Um, Quite, quite an interesting two years. We'll say that with the with what we've gone through last year. But, but what what was it about the company that that got you here? And and also, you know, what is it that is exciting and, and keeps you motivated here at Walmart? Well, it's it kind of was out of the blue. So I some of our colleagues at Walmart were people that I had known in previous parts of my career, and kind of got a call out of the blue. Would you be interested in talking about this job? And frankly, I never thought I'd leave DC. Didn't, didn't plan to leave DC, but started to look at this, and it was. Honestly, it was just too interesting and too good to, to pass up when I started to look at it. And I remember very well my interview with you, John, because I remember you and, and the rest of the team that I interviewed with too, you were so excited about Walmart and the opportunity that Walmart has to do good for people in, and in the world. And I thought to myself, I don't think they're faking it. Like they really are excited about the good that Walmart can do. And it was it's just something that didn't hadn't really occurred to me that that would be part of the interview process. But as I started to think about it, and then especially after I got to the company and started to, to understand the scope of what we do, I thought, you know what, you know, coming out of the federal government, you think, okay, you're at the Department of Justice, you can wear the white hat, you can put bad guys in jail, you can, you know, catch human traffickers and things like that. But then you come to Walmart and you think, man, we can actually change whole economies almost to dissuade people from engaging in human trafficking. So like we can actually, whereas the government can do things on the back end, we can do things on the front end to make sure that supply chains are free of, of slave labor and things like that. It's really cool and it's really exciting. In terms of um, you know, what it's like being here, the one thing that I really did not understand at all when I was interviewing for the job and it's been a really pleasant surprise is just the scope and scale and the diversity of the issues that we handle. And I feel like every single thing going on in the world sometimes we're touching and I'm learning about. So I came in the company in my mid forties and I feel like I've been learning something about so many different things, which is kind of exhausting, but really exciting. So whether it's tech or, you know, foreign policy issues affect us, of course, every area of law you can possibly imagine we touch, but also, you know, there's just so many issues. It really is like you open the newspaper and something about that is probably affecting us, which is really fun. 
I'm glad you brought up, um, you know, passion for people and opportunity. Um, I, I probably people that are watching this know that I started in a store part time, and 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 I I didn't really know what to expect. I just thought I would do this for a summer. I was like a failed musician and in college, so I thought I'll just do it for a few months. And and then you know I find myself um, realizing that anything that happens in the world basically is happening around or in our environment. And and there I can't think of a single day in almost well 27 years now that I haven't learned something or I haven't been able to see something on the outside and, and had learned something or saw something about it while I was at work at Walmart. The, the breadth is just fantastic. And, and, and look, I'm, I think I'm a generalist, you're a specialist and it, it, you know, if you want to over categorize what we are, but both, both have, you know, really valuable roles here. So this background you had that led you to more, you know, general um, breadth in law let, now has prepared you to do something really quite unique. It's funny that you think I'm a specialist. I think I'm a generalist. <laughs> because, <laughs> well, you are now. <laughs> you know, we can really, we can really drill down into specialties, and it's and that's what's so fun. I mean, even just if you think about the the lawyers who work for me, you've got specialists in healthcare and financial services and everything you can imagine. But then, of course, we've got so many people who are not lawyers doing so many really interesting things, whether it's food safety or or whatever it is. It's it's just something new every every day. Talk about the remit you have here and the variety of things that, that you do on a weekly basis? Yeah, it's kind of an interesting collection of functions. We call it global governance. And I, I realized shortly after I got to Walmart that a lot of people in the company don't know what global governance is. You know, they might know what legal is or what compliance is, but they don't really, they don't really know what's in the organization. Um, so it's, of course, the legal department. People usually know what lawyers do. We advise the business and try to help the business get to where they're trying to go, you know, with, with following the law. Of course, we have litigators who defend the company against lawsuits and things like that. So that's a legal department. We have another uh, vertical that we call the Office of the Corporate Secretary. So I'm the Corporate Secretary, but we have Gordon Allison and his team of lawyers. And they're, they're mostly lawyers, but they manage our you know, board of directors meetings. They handle corporate governance. You know, we're a publicly traded company, so we have to file things with the Securities and Exchange Commission. We have to follow the New York Stock Exchange rules, all those kinds of things, tax law, things like that. Then we have a compliance division, of course, which is the biggest one and, and all around the world. And they're handling, I mean, this is what's so interesting about Walmart. Because we're in so many different businesses, we have lots of different compliance issues, much more so than a lot of companies would have. So it's not just your typical ones, which are important, like anti-corruption and antitrust and things like that. But it's also it's food safety because we're a grocer. It's healthcare compliance because we have pharmacies and clinics. It's financial services compliance because we have money centers. It runs the plus, you know, environmental health and safety, all those sorts of things. You know, I just, I love the fact that, you know, food safety is about microbiology. I never had to think about microbiology before, <laughs> you know, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. We have experts, Sarah Moore and Moore is our expert on, on food safety. And then we've got uh, a new function. I know you interviewed Nula O'Connor not long ago. So I created that function. It's called digital citizenship, which is a term that we made up because we were trying to think of a way to, to convey the fact that there's so much of our business is driven by data and technology, which there, there are, of course, important issues around privacy, but it's so much more than just data privacy. It's ethical use of technology. It's, you know, when you use artificial intelligence, you want to make sure that there's no bias in the algorithm. They, all those kinds of issues are um, really hot and evolving and really, really important to creating trust with our customers and of course, complying with the law too. Let's see, then there's the global security and aviation. So they, they keep us safe, the aviation department. I mean, John, you're probably one of their biggest customers. They, you know, they fly our operators all around the country to visit stores and, and, um, and do, so they're a really great facilitator of, of operations. And then I've got global investigations. So these are lawyers who do internal investigations and then if we have a government investigation. So I'm going to be embarrassed if I if I miss somebody. Then we have a small central um, strategy group too. But it's it's a super super interesting collection of functions. So after that description, I want to stand corrected. You are a generalist, <laughs> <laughs> evolved from a specialty function. Let's let's just call it that. That's it's pretty amazing. What what advice, Rachel, would you have for people that are in school early in their career, and and hear the things you've described and 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 want to aspire to have a career like you've had? Like, what, what would you tell, what would you tell Rachel at 18 years old, if you could go back and say something today? Oh, man, you know, one thing, one thing I found, my career has taken a lot of twists and, twists and turns. I've done a lot of different things. Uh, you know, you think about the number of years I've been out of school, it's a lot of different jobs. And a lot of those things have just sort of 
opportunities that have sort of presented themselves that I wasn't necessarily looking for. And so, you know, I, some young lawyers will come to me sometimes and they have a very specific career plan in mind. And I say, you know, that's okay, but you got to remember that if you're, if you're too specific in your aspirations, you're more likely to be disappointed. And if you're willing to grab onto an opportunity, that's something you never, ever thought you would do, you might love it. And it might really develop you in, in a different way that then opens you up to even more opportunities that you never thought you would get. And so it's just being open to that kind of diversity of experience to me has served me very well. It's funny you, you describe it that way. I, I say something similar when people ask, and it's when an opportunity uh, opportunity presents itself, try to find the yes. There, there are always going to be a lot of reasons to not do things or take risks, but try to find try to find a reason to say yes, because the only way to be sure that you won't be able to move forward is by saying no. Now, you, you know, you've got to think through that and their constraints like time and family and where are you in life and et cetera. But uh, life just presents things. And, and I find people that, that do really well are the ones that they, they take a bit of a risk and, and they go for it. So we just launched a new code of conduct at Walmart. So love to hear uh, about that. It builds on our values, um, but, but tell us about the program. Yeah, well, you know, one of the great things about Walmart is that we take integrity really seriously. It's not just a put on, it's not, you know, just a, a veneer of really living our values, acting with integrity is really core to what we want to do every day. So the code of conduct you know, it's not an end in itself. The end, the, the goal is to live, with, uh, live our values and to act with integrity, but the code of conduct is a tool for helping people get there. So it's a document that explains to associates what we mean when we say acting with integrity, what do we expect them to do? And this new document, is, it's, it's exciting because it's much more accessible for associates all around the world and all across the company. So we want it to be easy to use, easy to read, easy to find what you're looking for, accessible, not a bunch of language, it sounds like it's been written by lawyers, you know, which these documents sometimes are. So this new draft is, is I think going to be a great contribution and will be really helpful to associates. It is. And, and if an associate has a question or doesn't know what to do in a situation, there are other resources that we have available, right? Yep. They've got FAQs. There's a whole website set up for this and people can always call ethics and compliance and actually get an answer to their question if they want to. Yeah, yep. that's something I've done in my career a number of times when something came up and I wasn't sure. It's better to just ask on the front side and, and get advice. Yep. And it's it's not for it's not if the ethics department always make a decision, but they can give you the advice so that you know what the right decision is that's aligned with our values and our policies. That's right, exactly right. Thank you so much for the time. Um, and thank you, I want to say on a personal level, for all your partnership the last couple of years. Um, I was just talking to someone a, a few minutes ago, and it was a year ago that we were seeing the United States shut big pieces of the economy down. And, and uh, we had enormous uh, volume increases on things like food and consumables and things got really slow in other parts of business. And there was so much going on. And you and I have talked, uh, at least it feels like weekly, if not more, sometimes many times a week. And, and I want to just say thank you for what you've done for me and my team. The things that our team has been able to accomplish are enabled by by your support and that of your team. And it, it means a lot to our associates. They've been amazing the last year. Well, we, lo we love working with you guys and it's great to be part of this company that's so fun and so interesting, such great colleagues. And yeah, I, I love it. So thank you for helping to bring me down here. And, and sometime we'll get to do one of these in person, but not yet, yeah. but we're getting closer. <laughs> so uh, look, looking forward yeah. to many more years ahead. Thanks, Rachel. All right, thanks, John.